It's just past 7 a.m. Teddy Peach is leaving for work in Cambridge from his apartment in Southie. But first, he has to make a decision on how to get there. I always want to be responsible and take the train, but once the delays start building up, it's easy to pivot. Even though Peach lives and works near the red line, he often chooses to Lyft or Uber. So we tagged along for his morning commute. So consistency, reliability, really yeah. the two things. Those are the biggest things, but comfort plays in too. On a red line train that might be very crowded in morning rush hour, you can barely take your phone out of your pocket. He's not alone. Last year, there were more than 81 million rideshare trips statewide, a 25% increase from the year before. Just how big of an impact is hard to tell, but there is no doubt the rideshare revolution is changing the way we all get around. We've seen that particular choice as a result of their popularity significantly increasing our congestion problem. Rick Domino of the urban think tank A Better City says it's time to get smarter about rideshare. These are, if you will, the new kids on the block, but the regulatory and the government policy and the approaches to how we manage this activity are woefully behind the eight ball. For example, rideshare cars too often blocking traffic during pickup or drop off. Designated spots like this one in Somerville can help. When you take a lane out of capacity because you're double parking, you're causing a nightmare. Also troubling is research showing that two out of every five rideshare customers would be taking public transit if they hadn't hailed a ride. That means lost revenue for the T, an estimated 16 million in 2017. The MBTA has a lot of room for improvement. So while there are ideas to better manage the impact of rideshare, the best fix might be getting people like Teddy out of the car and back on the T. Last year, half of all rideshare rides, 42 million, originated in Boston. It's a big number. Yeah, really?